Welcome back to Proverbs 31 Life. Last time we were together, we talked about, is the Lord your Savior? Today, we are back in Psalm 23, looking at, is the Lord your Shepherd? The Bible tells us that Jesus is the Good Shepherd. If you are saved, you are one of his sheep. However, you can live in a way that says, I'm not going to let you shepherd me. And we don't live in obedience. We don't live in accordance with his word. And he is a shepherd. Our actions don't change his position. And he's ready to be your shepherd to lead and guide and protect and all the things that a shepherd does. But sometimes we can live in a way that says, I'm not going to let you. I don't want you to do that. Um, the same way a child, you know, doesn't live in a way that lets you parent them. They're rebellious. They're resistant. They're not listening. It's the same same concept. So I want to look at that today and I want to ask you, is the Lord your shepherd? He wants to be. Psalm 23 um, is the basis for this. And this Psalm, this chapter gives us, it's, it's short, it's only six verses, but there's such an intimate view of Jesus that we see here. And it's a very familiar Psalm. It's often um, associated with funerals and because it can be familiar, we just kind of gloss over it. We're like, yeah, valley, shadow of death, Savior, got it. Okay. And we move on. But I want to look at this today, and I want you to keep the question in mind, is the Lord my shepherd? David was a man after God's own heart, and he walked with the Lord daily. David knew that he was a sheep in need of a shepherd. We all need the shepherd. He, David really understood the way of a sheep. So for him to identify as a sheep and identify the Lord as a shepherd, he understood that analogy. Like that wasn't hard for him. We are all prone to wondering and getting ourselves in trouble. That's what sheep do. That's why they need a shepherd. The Bible says, I'm going to read all of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. This means we're not going to lack. We are not in need. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. These are the tools of the shepherd. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We see so much here about God's leading, God's guiding, God's protection, God's provision, um, his restoration, that anointing his head with oil, that's caring tenderly for the sheep. If you are saved, you belong to Jesus, but you have a choice on whether you let him be your shepherd or not. In this passage, we see that the Lord is the only shepherd mentioned here. He is not one shepherd or a shepherd or just the one that David happened to choose. God gives us nothing else to trust him besides himself. We can be the shepherd of our own lives. We can let Satan be the shepherd of our life. We can you know, look to the world to lead and guide and help us, but that's it's not safe. That's not protective. That's not where our faith, our trust, our um, hope needs to be, and we need to trust the Lord. If we trust in or follow anyone or anything other than Jesus Christ, we will be led astray. You can, you can count on it. You are going to get away from the Lord. The shepherd cares for the sheep of his flock. That's his job. It's not a hobby. It's not something that he does when he has time or he feels like it. That is his job. It's a priority. That's what's important to him. The shepherd loves the sheep. That's why he cares for them so well. Jesus loves you. And he wants to care for you. In these few verses, we see that the Lord takes care of our emptiness. Verse 1. Verse 2, he cares for our essentials. Verses 3 and 4, he cares for our errors. Verse 5, he takes care of our enemies. And verse 6, he takes care of our eternity. God loves you more than you know. So much. He wants you to trust in him because he knows that's what's best for you. Let him lead you to green pastures and clean water. Let him give you rest, comfort, correction. That is what a loving shepherd does for his sheep. When the Lord is trying to keep you from something or he's trying to direct you a certain way or He's you feel like he's withholding something from you, 
It's not because he's angry or upset. Um, it's not because he wants to see you miserable. It's not because of anything. He doesn't want you necessarily to suffer in a way of not having those essentials. He's protecting you. It's a way to lead you back to him because there is freedom and there is safety and boundaries. When sheep start looking beyond the pasture that they are in to what appears to be better land, they get into trouble. When you and I start looking to greener pastures, we don't see all the dangers. That's why we have the shepherd. We don't see the wolves that are over there in the, in the tree line. We don't see the barbed wire fence that we're gonna get stuck on. We don't see the dirty water from here, it looks clear. You get up close and there's bugs and disease and parasites in there. The shepherd knows that. Part of the responsibility of a shepherd is to survey his field where he has his sheep. He knows where the fences are. He knows where the clean water is. He knows where the good grass is. He knows where the weeds are. Okay, we like to go eat the weeds, um, but he's got good nurturing grass here for us. He knows that if we stay up here on maybe this hill or this plain, that it's good food. It is nourishing. It's what we need for our soul, for our health. But if we get down over there next to the fence, it's where the weeds are. He knows that. Maybe he knows that there's a snake over there. Maybe he knows that the wolves have been tracking along that fence line and he saw their paw prints and we didn't. And we complain because we're stuck up here on this plane. And God says, yeah, because I'm protecting you. And we say, I don't like it. I'm going to go over there because I've never been over there before. And I see other sheep over there and can't be too bad. So I'm going to do what I want. And I'm going to go down here to this valley. So we get off our little plane and we go down where the fence is because, well, there's grass over there and... I see a puddle of water, you know, whatever. Um, and the good grass, what looked good, that we actually saw, is actually on the other side of that fence. So then we stick our neck through that fence and the barbed wire cuts us. We get entangled in it, it pulls at our, our skin, it pulls at our fur, and now we're, we're bleeding and we're sore and we're uncomfortable, we're vulnerable, we're weak. And here comes the wolf that's been walking that fence line. And we're stuck with no protection and nowhere to go because Satan is still a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And there we go. The food that we thought we wanted, that we thought looked good, was on the other side. And it was weeds. It wasn't good. It was parasite-ridden. The water that looked so good from up there because the sun hit it just right was actually just a muddy puddle. The sheep that we saw and we said, hey, well, other people are doing it. They weren't napping. They were dead carcasses because the wolf already got them. We well, just didn't want to listen to the shepherd. And now we're stuck. We're hurt. We're in danger. We've been captured. Now what? You going to call upon the shepherd now? He'll come get you. He'll take care of the wolf. His rod and his staff, they comfort. That's what corrects. That's what drives the enemy away. But if we don't call out for him, we keep insisting on our own way. We're left to our own devices. We don't see why that field over there, why that spot down there is not safe. God is not going to lead you anywhere that he has not already been. He's not going to lead you astray. He's not going to lead you in danger. He does not waste time. He's not going to leave you to a place to leave you stranded. Wherever he leads, he has a plan and a purpose. It's up to us to trust him. He does not lead us to abandon us. He does not start out leading us with a half-developed plan. There's no point in all of history in history past or eternity future where God has not been and where he doesn't already know what's there. The psalm ends at the house of the Lord because the sheep make it home every time. If you are saved, is the Lord your Savior? You, the, if you are saved, the Lord is your Savior. But is he your shepherd? Stay in the Word. Stay close to the shepherd and let him lead you and passive righteousness.